It's now time for Around Town on KWN Community TV Channel 7. The views and opinions on tonight's program are not necessarily those of the staff nor the management of KWN TV 7 and Dade County Broadcasting Incorporated. Now, let's go Around Town on KWN TV 7. Well, here we are on this sunny day. She <laughs> about took that breath too and early. Am, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I told you I'd be back every every second. Every second Monday. Yes. Monday, yes. Monday. And that way, um, I don't get burnt out. No, wait. <laughs> I mean, just to be. Just oh, to I be. have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I bet you don't. I bet you don't. But uh, but we have uh, we have a familiar face here today. We have Ernie. Um, Ernie Rains from Farm Bureau, mm-hmm. whom I've known for years and years and years. Right, right. And uh, he's coming on here to talk about Farm Bureau and to tell us about some different things that are happening there. Awesome. You know, he was here for years at Farm Bureau, and then he went over to Walker County with Farm Bureau. He traded. Uh, well, he went over there. I don't. I don't really know. I think he got some kind of a promotion or something. Oh, okay. We'll and then he came sliding. back. I guess I, you know. And I used to always tell him, I'd say, you know, instead of bringing these people inside. You need to keep the hometown boy here because right. this is a hometown community. Right. People like the people they know. And... I, well, it's just, you know, they're, we're just different here. I mean, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason they call us the independent state of date. I mean, right. there is a reason. Right. I went to a... Uh, I went to the, uh, he was there at the uh, business owner's social the other I night. I did, the GDBOA. And mm-hmm. and the, uh, the guy from Covenant, the president of Covenant... Uh, college was talking and he said you know that you know we want to be a part and i you know he kept referring to the independent state of day right right i mean it's just we're just we're one of those communities that um you know we dance our own drum is that what they say i guess we march to the beat of our own there we go i think it's something (laughs) yeah and uh and we like um you know, like Ernie was a hometown boy, mm-hmm. and we, and you know, and I'm sure the business has increased since he's come back. Right, right. There's a few more people. So. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm glad they, I'm glad they did that, and we're going to have him on here, and he's going to talk about some things happening down mm-hmm. there. And then we have, um, we have a um, a candidate. You know, we're always when it's when it's political it's season. That time. We're it's all that time over, of year. Yeah, which is an it's an off election, but it still is political season. Right. And uh, her name is Melissa Heist. You probably noticed some signs up around town. I had seen some signs, so now Did we you? can put a face with, with a sign. sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it yeah. at Veterans Park on my way through. Yeah. Well, I've so, seen several of them. Well, I kind of get restricted during the day to just this little spot. Yeah, <laughs> and so she is running for superior of uh, superior court judge. We have a um, we have a seat that will be uh, that will be up for re-election, and she's going to come on here, so you'll be able to put a face with that sign. And uh, that is awesome. Yeah, seems like a real nice lady. And uh, and I mean, then we have some. How bad could a judge be? Any judge, oh, right. or any? Yeah. Well, well once you know. they get judge, it might be okay. It's that attorney stage they got to get through. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, anyway, she's going to come on here and tell you a little bit about herself, and mm-hmm. I'm sure she'll ask you for your vote. Right. And then we have one of my favorites, which is my uh, my son, and he and we could say he marches to a beat. His yeah, his own little drum. His his own little drum, and uh, he's going to come on here and tell us a little bit about his uh, his last trip, which was to uh, to China and South Korea, uh, mm-hmm. and. And now he's leaving tomorrow to go to Thailand. Man. I know. I know. That's awesome, That's awesome though. I know. And, you know, we was talking to him last night, and um, and his dad said, now, um, now you have a – now, where is it exactly you're going to work? And he said, well, so-and-so, so-and-so. And then, anyway, as the as the uh, conversation progressed on, he says uh, – well, I mean, I'm I, I don't I'm, I don't really have the job there just yet. Uh, they're wanting to talk to me when I get there, and then we ask him where he's going to live, and he's like, "Well, I'll find a place when I get there. I'm going to stay in a hotel. I'll find a place." <laughs> and we was talking, and he said, "Can you believe our son is going halfway across the world? Doesn't know where he's going to live. With doesn't no know plans. Where, <laughs> where he's going to work. No plans." And we was talking about how he he really got the worst of both of both of us. <laughs> to, Very sporadic. To go, you know, yeah. well, I call it confident. I want to call it confident. <laughs> Makes me feel better to call it confident. Right, right. And That's he, awesome, but though. he will do fine. Oh yeah, he will. He will. He, he will. will. He will do fine. He always does. He always has. Well, he I got excited. I talked to my son this morning, and 
because he's a lineman. My son's a mm-hmm. lineman, and he called this morning. I hadn't seen him in like two weeks. He, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm driving. I said, where are you at? And he said, about to be in Trenton. I said, well, yay. Come by and see me. He said, New Jersey, Mom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's been there for almost two weeks. So he's working the winter storms. And my other son's in Miami, which if I had to pick one to visit right now, now is he it would probably be also? my... Yeah, they're both lovely. I thought you had told me that. Mm-hmm. So if I had to pick one to visit right now, I'd probably go to Miami. <laughs> well, you know, they say those linemen run to the storm. They do. They are the first ones there. So uh, Luke, actually, his first job was Irma. Wow. So, wow. yeah. I just, I, I, I got a feeling about it when he first went down there. So I called my insurance agent and I said, hey, let me go ahead and put full coverage on his car. I just don't feel good about this. That was on a Thursday. Saturday, a tree fell on it. Really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, well, listen, we had the, uh, We've got a, a, an event coming up, yep. the Chamber Banquet. Yes, the awards banquet is this Saturday, and I cannot wait. It's going to be a good one. Cody's got a flyer, I think, if he found it in time. Um, our theme this year is A Night at the Movies, and we're giving away prizes for the best actor, actress, and movie couple. So everybody dress up, you know, do your thing. We are roasting John Bradford. So if anybody's ever lived in Dade County for more than a couple days... You know John Bradford. Yeah, know who John Bradford is. So, and, and you know what? I will say this about Johnny Bradford. To know Johnny Bradford is to love Johnny. Bradford. I sat down with him for about half an hour the other day. Just had a ball. Cheryl, I'm not kidding <laughs> with you. I, if you don't, if you don't know him, you just ask around. Mm-hmm. You know, with all people, you can find most of the time you can find people that like some and people that don't or you know you can find these lukewarm people. i haven't found a don't yet johnny bradford i have always said mm. johnny bradford is the person if it, hey listen i'm talking to melissa tice now that's running for judge mm-hmm. be thankful johnny bradford's not running <laughs> it doesn't even matter if he's qualified no it doesn't johnny and and it's it's just yeah. a thing around here about Johnny Bradford. Right, right. If Johnny Bradford were to put his name on the ballot, I don't think he would even have a person that would run against him. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. I, I know I sure wouldn't have the nerve to be embarrassed that like well, that. Well, his son Bobby. <laughs> I mean, he is just so wonderful. Two years ago, his son Bobby had a double lung trans- transplant. Right. He's one of his roasters. And he oh, is he is. so excited. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. Um, he's sending me pictures that he don't know I'm getting that we're going to be flashing up and talking about. and It's going to be a good time. Will Garrett Well, he is... probably knows it now because he watches his show faithfully. Oh, yeah, but he don't know what pictures are going to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Will Garrett is going to be catering. It's um, A lot of people don't know. Will Garrett owns Guthrie's here. He ain't just chicken. He does sit-down dining food, and I've had it, and it is amazing. And Will Guthrie is a wonderful person. Now, last Mm -hmm. year he won. Didn't he win Citizen of the Year or something like that? Citizen of the Year. He sure did. And then um, Thatcher's got Small Business of the Year. So it's it's, it's huge. This year, of course, it's it's the same categories. We have Educator of the Year, Small Business, Corporation, Citizen, and the Bill O'Neill Award. And And Nonprofit. And Nonprofit. And the Bill O'Neill is a lifetime achievement for Dade County. And this year, it came to a tie, and we couldn't break it. So you have two. We have two. Okay. I got with the family, the Bill O'Neill family, and they said, "We ain't picking." <laughs> so we're doing two this year. So that's very odd for us to do that, but. And that will be Saturday night. Saturday night, 6 o'clock at the Civic Center right there. It's Montague Street. It's 43 Montague Street is the actual address. Do you still have some tickets available? We do have tickets available. If you have small children and you're telling me I can't come because we can't find a babysitter, Life Church is going to be babysitting the kids. Well, that's great. So there will be someone. They'll be on site, so they'll never really be away from you. They're going to be doing activities in the back of the Civic Center, so there's no excuse. Okay, now if they want tickets, come by the chamber they can come by the chamber or call me call my cell phone it's easier uh 423-834-4038 and they will be available the day of you can purchase them actually at the door what are you having to eat it's oh i don't even remember what we talked about um 
he does some like a fajita chicken it's really good and asparagus or snap beans and potatoes and rolls and okay. we're gonna have a popcorn machine with candy just like you're going to the movies i have oh that's neat the red carpet with the brass little banisters that you got to walk down it's, we're really going all out we've had a lot of really good donations there's <coughs> going to be a ton of door prizes just about everybody will get something they'll be selling auction items we have stuff from the flooring store that i picked up yesterday um uh, Life Church is doing for the silent auction an inflatable, like those big inflatables that the kids play in. You picked it up yesterday at my store mm-hmm. on a Sunday. No, 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 Friday. Oh, that's where okay. my weekend. I started to say, well, you hadn't been to my store. <laughs> yeah, if I did, I did it illegal. Um, uh, but Life Church, <coughs> there'll be for the silent auction items is an inflatable, and those things are expensive to rent an inflatable for a kids' party. So that'll be one of our silent silent auction items. Um, Madex, they usually do some kind of concert tickets. He's looking right now to see what kind of concert tickets we can get, but they're usually always really good. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff to go for. I know um, Kay's Diet Clinic and the Family Practice, they're both putting stuff in. Mountain Valley Cleaners, $40 off a of tux rental. Can't beat that. No. They're expensive. So oh. with prom coming up and... Maybe you can talk Ernie into some little bags of peanuts. We can talk into something. <laughs> Door prizes, anything with your name on it, gets you recognized. So okay, but let's get the show going here. We we have these great guests that we uh, we definitely want to bring on. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with our first guest. And I guess we could bring our political candidate on. What do you think about that? Let's put her on the spot. So we're going to bring Melissa Heiss, who is running for Superior Court Judge, and let you meet her. Can you gig it? Oh, yes, you can. We know you've been waiting for a long time, and now Tennessee Valley Net is bringing it to you. Gigabit Internet Service, now available in certain areas of Dade County. Not just fast, super fast Internet Service, now available from Tennessee Valley Net. People are talking, I mean really smiling, about gig speed Internet, available in limited areas from Tennessee Valley Net. Call today at 706-657-4367 or log on at tvn.net and see if gig speed is available where you are. We know you'll gig it from Tennessee Valley Net. Georgia Northwestern Technical College is now accepting applications for classes. We offer programs in business, health, industrial, and public service at six campus locations with financial aid options as well. Take day, evening, or online classes to get your degree, diploma, or certificate. Apply now. Drop by one of our campuses today or check us out at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Get focused. Get hired. The Dade County School System continues to put the safety of students first. That's why the Love the Bus Elementary campaign rolls on. Love the Bus is designed to teach students the importance of safety, respect, and proper bus etiquette. As we continue to enhance efforts of safety for our students, we'd like to have you as part of our team. If you're considering a career as a bus driver, call the Dade County Schools Transportation Department at 706-657-7053 today. Part-time hours with full-time benefits as a bus driver for the Dade County School System. Delivering top quality primary health care locally. We are Northeast Alabama Health Services. With seven locations, there's one near you. Scottsboro, Section, North Sand Mountain and Higdon, Skyline, Woodville, Fife and Fort Payne. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and of course your private insurance. If you're unemployed, low income, or have a high copay or deductible, you may also qualify for a reduced rate office visit as low as $16. Ask about our free medication program. And ladies, you may qualify for a free or reduced rate mammogram. Dental referrals for our patients with tooth removal and physical for only $15. Putting your health concerns first, we're Northeast Alabama Health Services. Cervical cancer screenings now available at Northeast Alabama Health Services. Get that next new-to-you vehicle from Rayburn Cloud at Cloud Auto Sales, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon. Right now, check out an 08 Nissan Rogue SL. Real nice, one owner, just $5,995. How about an 05 Ford Explorer, 4x4 with a big V6, only $4,995. Or an 07 Buick Lucerne, real nice leather and chrome, only $5,995. Visit Cloud Auto Sales on Facebook right now for the latest inventory at Cloud Auto Sales, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon. 597-3273 for Cloud Auto Sales. <laughs> we are back with Melissa Heiss, and as I told you earlier, you've probably seen signs up around town. She's running for Superior Court Judge. So, now, Melissa, you're, uh, this is the first time you've been on here. Yes, First it time is. we've ever met. Yes. So, uh, and you're running for Superior Court Judge. Yes, I am. So, tell us a little bit about your background. 
Okay. So that um, we know you're qualified to be the judge. <laughs> right. So we know you know what you're talking about. I mean, the statutory requirements. Uh, yeah. I am. I've been practicing law for 25 years. Off really? And off. Yes. Well, you don't look that old, does she? Well, I know. Look at Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I graduated in 93. You this might is have actually, to show your ID. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Right. That's my, my uh, 25th uh, law school reunion this year. So I'm, wow. I was surprised by that, too, when I got that notice. <laughs> But I've been out of school. I went to Cumberland School of Law down in Sanford at Birmingham for law school and uh, came home and uh, practiced uh, law with Watson and Dana. I don't know if y'all ever knew mm-hmm. Dennis Watson and Joe Dana, but I practiced with them a while. Then I um, I went to work for the judges, our Superior Court judges at that time, full time, and as their law clerk. And after that, I started a nonprofit called Four Points. And a lot of people may know Four Points from work at, it struck a bell. <laughs> yes, it did. Tell me what that is. Okay, it was a nonprofit agency that works with families involved in domestic violence. They do super, now they do supervised visitation. I used to practice under that umbrella. Mm-hmm. Does transparenting seminar people who are going through divorces, custody, and I transparency. have heard of that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I hmm. have. I so have. with the visit program, they work with both foster kids and people who are just going through divorces and custody battles and that kind of thing. Also, one of the big things. And you I, founded that. Yes. Well, how nice That's awesome. is that? That's back great. In, back in. 96 and um, one of the last things I was doing that I was particularly excited about was working with some multidisciplinary teams uh, made up of people from all the government agencies all nonprofit social service agencies and we were working on um, teen dating violence trying to get some policies and protocols for that policies and protocols for uh, domestic violence in general with individual agencies and uh, that was a state funded grant that we had for many years actually they still have that grant mm-hmm. but I left I left four points in um, 2012 in which the Walker County Magistrate Court and was a full-time magistrate judge for almost a year and then went back to practicing law full-time in 2013-2014 down with Albert Palmer in Somerville so that's where I've been since then. So you're in Somerville now is that where you live? Uh, Yes no I don't live there I live in Rock Spring. Okay that's just over the mountain. Yes it is it is. Well now and tell us a little bit about your family. I'm married to Mark and we live in Rock Springs. We have two children. They're 12 and 7. Keep us very busy and they go to Oakwood Christian Academy over in Chickamauga and um my, I grew up in Channing Valley, graduated from Channing Valley High School back in 86. While I'm telling my age, I might as well go ahead and tell it all. Um, uh, in 86, I graduated, and my mom's from New Salem. My family's from New Salem. Now, who is your family? Uh, my mom was a Blaylock. So most, a lot of people may remember my grandfather, Wormy Blaylock. That's what everybody knew him by. as his nickname. Um, but my Uncle Jim and my Uncle Ray, they're responsible for all these signs you see in Dade County. They've been out really putting up signs and things That's for awesome. me. And I'm very proud of them and very thankful for them. And uh, so my great-grandmother was a Bradford. And my great-grandfather's a Neil, so up from New Salem. So I'm, I've been oh. up on the mountain all my life. Oh, all okay. My life. Well, that's great. Okay. So. Well, now, um, you know, when I first met you, I mentioned this to you because I had um, – I, I, well, it was just it just crossed my mind because I remember, as I told you, I remembered when Judge House ran. Uh, the second time I asked him, I said, "Well, do you have any opposition?" And he said, "No." He said, "You know, it's it's a uh, there hadn't been a, a sitting judge hadn't had opposition since 19 something, and I don't remember <laughs> what it was." So when I saw your sign, I thought, "Well, now that's a." Uh, we have a judge in right. there now, so so you're actually running against a sitting judge. That's right. that's unusual. Right. That's awesome. Right. That's we unusual. Have, we have two judges. That, we have four judges total for the Superior Court. In this uh, election go around, that's Judge Thompson, who just took Judge Wood's seat mm-hmm. when Judge Wood retired, mm-hmm. and then Judge Van Pelt's running. And I've chosen to challenge Judge Van Pelt uh, for a variety of reasons. And then next time will be Judge House and Judge Judge Graham will run. Right. So okay. they can st- two and two to stagger the terms. Now it's it's four year terms, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Okay. So so, and uh, the Superior Court judge in your circuit, you serve? Yeah, we serve Walker, Day, Catoosa, and Chattooga counties. So anybody in those four counties can, can vote. You know, and I, I don't think a lot of people uh, understand that, but, you, but y'all travel around. Yes, yes. I, mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people uh, right. knows that. Yeah. I, no, I, no, I thought they were, your county was your county, so. No, it's a, it's a, it's a circuit. And down south Georgia, you know, they'll have... 10 to 15 counties. Well, their counties are a lot bigger, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the popula- it's based on population yeah. and the number of cases, and so that's why it's that way. Used to be Chattooga was in the Floyd circuit, and then Floyd Rome got so big mm-hmm. that, that Chattooga got hooked on to Lookout Mountain, I don't know how, before my time. Now, what's the but, main cases that get seen by Superior Court? There's... That's that's your general trial level, so you're going to see your felony criminal, you're going to see adoption,
separations, divorces, landline disputes, cases of equity, those kind of things. Um, the and major stuff. The major stuff. <laughs> Appeals <laughs> from your lower co- right. court, like if you have a probate or magistrate. Um, in this county, a probate or magistrate matter that goes up. And they also do misdemeanors. Well, some misdemeanors here. You have your probate court that handles your, tra- your traffic things. So each county has is a little different. Walker and Chattooga and Catoosa have state courts, which mm-hmm. is an intermediary court between the lower courts and the superior court so it's a little different for them hmm. so now who has that that's in walker katusa and chattooga they have but we don't but you do not and that's also based on caseload that's something decided in atlanta probably they have real heavy caseloads right right because i know we really mm-hmm. don't right no. well with your probate court handling your traffic court mm-hmm. it's it makes it a little different that right. way so and then okay Okay. Now, through law, what was your main focus in law? What did you... I focused in the end, I did a little bit of everything, but in the end I was focusing on family law, which is what I've spent most of my time doing. Uh, when I went back to practice with Albert uh, back six, five or six years ago or whatever, I've done everything. Matter of fact, I'm working on a petition for certiorari to the Supreme Court on a on a probate court case that's been uh, appealed and appealed and appealed. So that's what I was working on this morning before I got over here. And uh, land disputes, and I, I really like estates and wills, and uh, but I still do the divorces and all that. And that's your bread and butter. Most every lawyer in the circuit does a lot, a lot, a lot of divorces. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that's such a shame. It is. It is. And is. that's your bread and butter. Oh, yeah. man, that's a shame. <laughs> it's awful to say it that way. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry, folks. No, mean but I mean, it is. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. 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 In criminal wow. law. So. so, and I've done some criminal. I am a magistrate judge now. I'm a part-time magistrate with Walker County. So, um, and I've assisted Albert. Albert is a long-time, 30-year criminal mm-hmm. defense lawyer. So, I end up second chairing to him because it's just easier when you in that kind of experience I'm, I'm, I'm in sure. a, you know right, right. so and I do a lot of appellate work as a result of, of those things so and I enjoy that too so well if you could just briefly tell us uh, exactly why did you decide to make the change well um, because of my diverse background having done nonprofit work and worked with families our court system is changing we started a drug court a piloted drug court over mm-hmm. in Walker County just Thompson's handling that um, they're going to be starting a new parental accountability court which I think don't quote me on this but I think Judge House might be handling that then there's a mental health court that's going to be rolling out and I would like to see a veterans court started mm. um, my background working with people one on one collaborating with services collaborating with state agencies with families working within the court system like I did with four points and then of course practicing I just think I have better experience to to go forward with those kind of changes right. in the court system uh, not to take anything away from Judge Van Pelt's 22 year experience I mean he's got that I can't there's not anything I can mm-hmm. do about that but I just think that my particular expertise is what makes me a different and better candidate for the job at this point Mm -hmm. because I think I can move us forward and with the program development like I did at four points I think that I can establish help establish those courts and get them on the right footing at the ground level so that they can grow and we can move them out to the other four counties well you said something that was interesting to me um the um, veterans court exactly what is that it's it's similar to your drug court and your mental health court um with your returning veterans they often well one of my reasons for being passionate about it is that we're we're seeing these folks come back from afghanistan and iraq mm-hmm. um and they have gotten themselves into some bad ways. Um, a lot of times it's drug addiction or something like the that. The PTSD by itself makes you do crazy things. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I've had two experiences in my practice where, uh, well, one, well, two experiences, and I had one kind of uh, that was on a private matter, but um, where good kids, good families came home, decorated veterans, and they got with the wrong crowd because of these issues, mm-hmm. and uh, they ended up getting in trouble. And our court system just looks at them, okay, you did such and so, and this is what we do. There was no real recognition of their service and why they're that way. Mm -hmm. You know, not to say that you excuse the behavior, but the consequences need to be a little different. And there needs to be some, again, some collaboration between services. And this one young man that I'm aware of, I mean, he had to go all the way to Dublin, Georgia, to get the appropriate care Mm -hmm. he needed for his PTSD. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things that happen with these young men. I mean, their sounds, um, being in tight spaces, all kinds of environmental things that affect them greatly that keep them from being able to get jobs and to be productive. And I think that we need to work on um, 
making sure that they're taken care of in the appropriate manner. Again, consequences, you have to have that, but at the same time, you've got to look at it with a with a different lens, I think. Our oldest son, he was um, in Afghanistan, he was a sniper, and yes. when he came back with some really serious PTSD because, I mean, he wasn't allowed to tell us everything he did, some things he did tell us he wasn't supposed to, but it can mess you up. I mean, he well, was on suicide watch for like three months. I mean, yes. And they're afraid to reach out for help because there's there's a thing that if you do try to reach out for psychological help, they can pull your rank. They right. can give you dishonorable discharge when all they really need is somebody to talk to. Right. But them coming up and saying that they've got a psychological, so see, that'll be great. Right. And we a have a very strong veterans groups here. Here in your county, yeah. you've got a great veterans group in Fort Oglethorpe. We need to hook these people up together mm -hmm. so they can help each other. Because they're but, afraid to seek help yeah. because they're going to lose their position. They're going to lose, you right. know, a dishonorable discharge is the worst thing you can get. <coughs> Right, right. And they don't deserve that because they, you know, they came back with PTSD. Right. Well, um, Melissa, we have one minute left. And so what I would like to, for you to do is to take the opportunity to look out there okay. and reach out to our viewers and sell yourself. Yes, say so whatever you'd like to. Just speak directly to the people. <laughs> well, I want to remind everybody that the voting for this, it's a nonpartisan race, is on May 22nd. Early voting starts Saturday, May 12th. I wish you would vote for me. If you have any questions about me or my judge you can visit me at melissaheisforjudge.com and Melissa Heiss on face, for judge at, on Facebook as well. Okay. So I'm totally available to anybody who wants to ask me anything. Come to the banquet Saturday. She'll be there. You'll have a chance to meet her, and I can give you her information through the chamber as well. Thank and you. we will uh, we will do our best to have her back one more time before the mm -hmm. actual election. And we Thank appreciate you. you taking the time out, and we wish you all the luck. Thank you. Hey, knocking on them doors is that's what I'm doing. Hard, and it's I'm cold doing. right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's <Right>. raining. <laughs> hey, but if you'll be over, hey, these people are so nice over here. That I know they'll love knock it. on them doors, and you'll get dinner and all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. NL Tax and Bookkeeping is ready to serve all of your tax needs. Nancy Anderton's been serving the tri-state area since 1978. Now you can get your taxes prepared with no out-of-pocket expenses. Ask about up to a 1200 refund advance. It's fast, easy, safe, and convenient. NL Tax and Bookkeeping is open 8.30 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and 8.30 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern on Saturday questions about the Affordable Care Act, we have those answers too. And we offer a free form price comparison. Experienced and professional tax services. NL Tax and Bookkeeping. 500 Alabama Highway 73, 7 miles from downtown Trenton. Call today at 706-657-4758 or 256-597-2829. NL Tax and Bookkeeping. 706-657-4758 or 256-597-2829. At First Southern State Bank, putting you first is our priority. First with convenience, with branches in six great communities, Fort Payne, Rainsville, Scottsboro, Higdon, and our Stevenson office now recently enlarged and remodeled. First with our friendly, experienced staff, always helpful and ready to serve. And first with our mobile on-the-go banking. Our mobile app is fantastic, user-friendly, secure, and free. So whether it's online or in person, you're our first priority at First Southern State Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Innovation and quality, two things you don't normally hear about in a recruitment ad, but you'll hear a lot about innovation and quality when you join the team at Vanguard National Trailer. Vanguard is an industry leader in the production of dry van trailers and composite plate trailers. And right now, Vanguard National Trailer is hiring energetic and hardworking team members to be assemblers and welders, as well as industrial maintenance for first shift openings. And you'll work a full 40-hour week in four days, which means three-day weekends, and overtime is available. Working at Vanguard National National Trailer has other great benefits too, like paid holidays, paid vacation, medical, dental, vision, and life insurance, plus a 401k plan. Full-time work, three-day weekends, available overtime, and great benefits. That's Vanguard National Trailer. Fill out your application today. Vanguard National Trailer is an equal opportunity employer. Applying person today. Starting pay, 10 to $14 an hour, depending on position. Vanguard National Trailer Corporation. Highway 11 North, turn beside the Premier Healthcare Center on Vanguard Drive. At Gross Furniture in Trenton, Georgia, you get the savings, the selection, and the satisfaction of getting the furniture you deserve at the prices you want. Come in, relax, and take your time. Our staff can assist you with the entire process, from expert advice to professional delivery. That's because Gross Furniture is local and treats you with honesty. 
just north of the Courthouse Square on Highway 11 in Trenton. Gross Furniture, the home furnishing store that offers you more. Okay, we are back, and this is Mr. Ernie Rains. I guess most of you know him. He's a real familiar face, and we have uh, Lisa Bell on here, and you're pretty familiar, too. Yes. And uh, so, Ernie, I want you to just kind of, hey, you're all about sell. I know you can sell some stuff. Well, I'll try to. Uh, We're here today to represent Georgia Farm Bureau and basically what they do and what we're all about. And I want to let you know that Lisa Bell's been with us for seven years as a customer service rep, and Mm -hmm. she's just recently promoted to a career agent. So she's got a different different job with us, and uh, we're excited. So what will she uh, be doing? She will be doing the same thing she was doing as a <laughs> as a customer service rep, but as an agent, she so, also will solicit uh, new business, and she'll be building her own clientele. Sounds to me to, like you uh, just gave her another hat. I hope you gave well, her a raise, Ernie. Well, she it comes with <laughs> benefits, okay? And uh, if she does well. She will uh, she will appreciate those benefits. Yes. Well, okay. Well, so now, uh, Ernie, exactly. You have been an an agent here. I remember when I first met you, you was over in the Old Door Chris building. Wasn't it yes, the Door Chris building? it was an Old Door, yeah. And that's an, been 26 years, 25? 27. 26? Yeah, right at 27 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. And now Farm Bureau has their, uh, I guess most people know, but they built a building. Right, we have a building down at uh, 11751 South Main, uh, just a little south of Trenton. And so you went, and this time you went from one agent to how many? Um, because I, you was the only one, wasn't you? Well, at the time? no, I had four agents under me at one time, and then we kind of restructured things, and I left and went to uh, Walker County and worked for four nine years. And well, came I was back. talking about when I first met you. Oh, was the only one. I was I was just like Lisa. I just started. Right. Okay. And uh, I had a manager over me, and so right. there was only two of us when we started. Okay. So Farm Bureau's really grown around here. It's um, yeah. It's 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 um, we got about twelve hundred families we uh, we insure, um, but uh, Farm Bureau when it started it was just a uh, it was a member organization that promoted agricultural at, at the uh, state the local and national level so they promoted things within the counties uh, we're we're active and help as much as we can with uh, 4-H and uh, with FFA over at uh, the schools and um, we try to you know you know farming and it, it affects every one of us right. I mean from what we're wearing to what we eat so uh, um, so in 1959 there was 50 farmers uh, around Bartow County got together and they they were not happy with the insurance service they was getting You're for their kidding. farms and this started in Bartow County Bartow County which was a rural area at the time now today we don't look at it that way so uh, Farm Bureau Insurance Company was actually started by by 50 farmers and now we have a office in all 159 counties uh, in the state of Georgia all employees are from the state of Georgia uh, or live in the state of Georgia not maybe so from, is that a requirement um, I mean, I think it's nice if it is. Well, it, it is for the insurance industry, for us as agents and all. Uh, they feel like if, if we're in the county and we're active in the county and, and we're seen in the county, then it, it promotes what we want to promote. So um, so are you telling me that Farm Bureau is only in the state of Georgia? Farm Bureau is a, the, the, the insurance company. Now, we're, we're part of a larger organization, which is the American Farm Bureau, but that's that's two entities in itself. One is the the membership, and one is the insurance company. And of course, the insurance company. I did not know that. <laughs> but uh, um, you know, so so we started out in the rural areas. Now we're in all 159 counties, not only in the rural areas but inside the cities also. So we can sell home, farm, auto, life insurance, and then if you, uh, then we we uh, just a few years ago uh, we uh, hooked up with Farm Bureau Bank. So. We are doing um, we are doing uh, refinancing of, of loans and recreational vehicles. So, uh, if you don't like your rate or whatever, give uh, Lisa or myself a call, and we'll we'll see if we can. Well, no, uh, we save need you to some give money. Lisa a call. We need to hear from her. Sure. We know, Ernie. You didn't. I can. <laughs> we don't know. You got a huge clientele. You need, let's help Lisa out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. To okay. help Lisa, it helps you, don't it? You bet. 
Yes. So, uh, so Lisa, so tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've been down there for seven years, but you've kind of been working behind the scenes. Right. Uh, as a customer service rep, I, you know, um, I have, like you said, um, have been working not really behind the scenes. <laughs> I've been pretty active, but, um, but yeah, being uh, him having uh, the confidence in me to, to promote me to an agent, I feel like that's really rewarding. So, so you are seeking business now. You're seeking am, your own clients. Yes. So the the difference in being a customer service rep and, and an agent is, yes, now I do solicit my own business and and you know build my own book. Yeah. Well, I think you'll do well. Oh, well Don't thank you. you. I, I, I know do. you would. I, you yeah, I, I believe her, so too. I want her to do real I'll, well. So. Of course. Yes. Of I love Dade County so. and been here a while and have family here. So yeah. Well, now tell us who your family is. Now, that's the way it always is here. Who's your family? Lynn Croft. Lynn Croft. Mm. No? From New England? No, Marvin. Uh, Yeah. Marvin Croft. Yes, he's my dad's brother. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's my uncle. Well, let's just keep it all in the family. (laughs) Getting close, (laughs) there. Yeah, I know Brenda. So you're working there on Brenda then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Brenda. But, uh, Married my high school sweetheart. Okay. Yes. He, so do you Shaman, have children? Shaman Bell. Do you have children here? Yes, I have a daughter, 25 tomorrow. And now who is she? Leah. Leah. Mm-hmm. Did she go to Dade County? She graduated in 2012. Well, I guess she went to school with Dick. She did. Wow. I remember whenever she was little, they played soccer together. Oh, I think okay. Her name was the coach. You were the coach, weren't you? I have no yes. idea. I, <laughs> I tried yes. to coach soccer. It didn't work out too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good then. So, um, so if uh, for all your insurance needs, so you'll do a- yes. anything and everything right. that that Farm and Bureau a, does. And if Farm mm-hmm. Bureau, if, if for some reason that the underwriting or or the risk doesn't uh, qualify for our Farm Bureau company, we have a, a little over a hundred brokerage companies that we can find business for that that risk. So, if there's something mm-hmm. that you might have that that's not normal or, or not uh, some kind of business like or whatever. Instance, yeah. give us uh, a well, if you have some kind of a contractor liability policy you need for, for a certain business and you need some liability for it, and if it's something that Farm Bureau can't do, I'm sure one of my 100-plus broker companies could uh, could find a, find a place to put that so we could offer a policy for you. Mm-hmm. So okay. we're, we're looking at anybody that comes through the door, you can uh, insure we're going to try to find a product <laughs> yes. that will match up what their needs are. Well, now you mentioned uh, you do uh, refinancing on loans. We, so kind of like a bank. Well, there, it's a it's it's Farm Bureau Bank, and I think we were the forty something uh, state that signed up to be a part of their program, and it's a conservative bank that that services the Farm Bureau members across the United States, and so with it being conservative. Um, the 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 rates are very competitive, but it's again it's one of those uh, things that where your local agent usually knows the customer, and we're able to be able to uh, go in there and and uh, in the little remarks, you know, tell a little bit how long you known that person. Hey, they've been with Farm Bureau. Kind of like the 10, old 15. way of doing business. Well, a right. little bit, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Little bit. A little so, bit. And it's, um, you know, we're able uh, through the years being able to help uh, several, several of our well, members. Well, see, I didn't know that. That, that well, struck me. Well, thank you as... for having us on and, and well, being able to me. tell all this. Well, that struck me as odd, though. So the, so the insurance company is kind of your bank, too. Well, it, it, yeah, we kind of, the bank kind of got into the insurance business, so now the insurance company's got yeah. got into the bank yeah. a little bit. Okay, now I saw on here brokerage. That's, that, that's your other company. That's that the other company, right. And and you look at the insurance companies or, or, or an insurance agent, and, and I'm proud of what I do. I enjoy what I do. We do two things. We, we um, protect assets through uh, writing uh, insurance on a home, autos, farm, whatever the – the, the uh, product needs, uh, boats, whatever it may be, and then we create assets by protecting one's income if they had an untimely death or something, you know. So so if you, you turn around and, and uh, you, you think you've got a little life insurance at work, but um, 
you know, something happens on the way home and, and now you've lost that income by an untimely death, do you really have enough uh, protection for that family from now on, you know, to replace that income that, that was just lost in that family? So we do two things that, that's that's really important to me, and that's one is we protect assets by writing insurance and we create estates by writing the life insurance. You know, and you got to, you Yeah, know. people, I, I, you know, I've heard people talk about, um, yeah, I've uh, I don't really need that much life insurance. It doesn't cost that much to to be buried, but what they're not thinking, I mean, I think this in my mind, I'm thinking, but you have two small kids, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. It's not about, I mean, it's about that income, who you're supporting. Right. And usually nowadays, it takes both incomes just to get by. You know, if you're fortunate to be able to get by with one income, that's great. But mostly really it takes aren't you? right. It takes two incomes, and when one of those incomes are gone from now on, um, you know, you need to look at that. And it doesn't take that much. There's different products out there. We got several, and it doesn't take you know that much. You're you're pay you'll be paying more probably in your cell phone bill or your your cable TV and internet bill, whatever that you have, probably a lot more than what it would take to protect your family. So. Hey, that's mm-hmm. a good pitch right there. Very good. Because how Honest. could you, how could your yes. cell phone or your cable or internet be more important than, than your the family yeah, of your family? That's, that's right. just that's, priorities. That's, that's, that's priorities. it. That's just it. You look at it. Hey, that's why you're a good insurance salesman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. But you have to point that out. I mean, you know. Right, people don't think about it. You mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, well, the, the, and two, it, uh, another thing that we like to do is, is we like to sit down with our, our members, our clients, and go over their policies. You know, I hate it, or I feel bad. I don't hate it. I feel bad when, when after we have a storm like we did last night, and they call and say, hey, am I covered? You know, I'd rather for them to know and to do that, come in and talk to me. Get your notebook out. Come in with a list of questions. Hey, what about this, this, and this? And if I don't know the answer, I'll get it for you. But uh, let's sure, go over the policy. So. And I'm sure you've, you've had experiences to where you've had to deliver some really bad news, and then you've probably had some experiences to where you've you've had to deliver some news that was just relief. Right. It's it's um, In 27 years, I've, I've done both. I've done both quite a, quite a few times. And, <laughs> And again, it's up to all you know. Spend 15, 20 minutes with us. Sit down and go over your insurance, and feel better about what you've got and what you you know. Um, that's why I, I deal. I like to deal with someone that to sit down. And there's several insurance companies in the in the area, but I like to sit down to no matter what business it is, sit down so I can talk to them. You know, I want my bank to be local because I want to talk to my banker. And, because um, people do business with people, don't right. they? Right. That, that's where it's at. It's about relationships. It's, anything's about relationships. Mm-hmm. And and so you build a relationship, and you build trust with that relationship, and mm-hmm. um, and then um, and at, 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 you go online and you buy your product or you talk to somebody on the phone and that's it. You're, you're buying a product that you may, you may be known, and, I mean, you may know all about insurance. And you say, okay, I want this, this, and this, but um, most you people know, don't, though, aren't they? Right, and that's why it's good to sit down with your your local agent, uh, whether it be us or someone else. Go over your policies and uh, make sure that you you don't have those gaps in coverage. And unless you do that, and you have a claim, you don't really know. You know, that's when you call and say, well, am I covered for this? You know, and and some people forget that they are, but but you know it's best to know up front before something like that happens, and to to actually um, keep that from happening is, is sit down and talk with your agent and go over your policies. So if we have people out there that would like to go over their policies or talk about some new policies, um, they need to call what number? Uh, our office number is seven zero six. Uh, 657-7515 uh, and you can ask for myself or Lisa and we'll be glad to uh, uh, set a time to uh, for you to come by and, or if it's not convenient for you to come by the office we'll be glad to, to come to your home or office and, and, and even meet you at lunch and talk to you about it. Okay. Well Lisa we wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming on honey. Thank you. Okay. We'll be right back and we're going to bring uh, we're going to bring Dex on here and let us let him show us some uh, pictures of his last trip and tell us a little bit about his new trip. Can you believe these kids? <laughs> I know. He's, uh, 
Our yeah. sons grew up together playing, banging them guitars. <laughs> still, I think they're still banging them. I don't know together, but they... They are banging them, though, aren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what kind of music it is, but it's uh, it's not the CCR I grew up on. No. <laughs> okay. We will uh, see. We'll be right back. A time-tested financial institution equipped with the latest banking technology, the Bank of Dave, with mobile banking to fit your on-the-go lifestyle. Download our latest app today for your iPhone, Android, or tablet to bank on the go. Check your balance, pay bills, make deposits, and keep track of your account anytime and anywhere with the Bank of Dave's smartphone app. Make life easier by using today's most advanced banking technology to your advantage. Call us at 657-6842 or visit on the web at bankofdave.com. Your hometown bank since 1956, the Bank of Dave. Main offices on Highway 11 North in Trenton and drive throughs on Highway 11 North and Highway 136 West. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Brown's Tire Pros knows that when you need tires for automotive service, you don't need a hassle. Brown's Tire Pros has been family owned and operated since 1994, and you'll always get friendly customer service and never be sold anything you don't need. We sell major brands of tires like Michelin and BF Goodrich. In fact, Michelin offers safe, fuel efficient, long lasting tires that'll keep you going for miles to come. Visit us at Brown's Tire Pros in Trenton today or online at brownstirepros.com. Methamphetamine affects everyone, your neighbors, your friends, and even your family. Know the signs. Physical symptoms include you may have extreme difficulty sleeping and even insomnia, and you may lose your appetite. Know the signs. Please know the signs. You can seem nervous and anxious and even have paranoia. Know the signs. Overheat easily and sweat without even being hot. Know the signs. Dilated pupils and even hair loss. Know the signs hallucinations and delusions and you can also have tachycardia which is a rapid heart rate know the signs you may have liver damage and loss of skin elasticity know the signs you may notice unexplained financial instability and social isolation know the signs you may have a false sense of euphoria coupled with a strong depression and even risky behavior legal trouble memory loss and repeated incarceration please know the signs unfortunately we do have lunch or dinner at Guthrie's, home of the original golden fried chicken finger and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's can help you plan your family's meals or get-togethers with bucket specials every Tuesday, those delicious wings on Wednesday, and platters every day of the week. Plus, get sweet tea by the gallon. Remember, Guthrie's has a party room for small gatherings, too. Guthrie's, Highway 136 West in Trenton, home of those golden fried chicken fingers and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's, not fast food, good food fast. Okay, we're on with my sweet little boy. <laughs> yeah, that's Mom, me. Mom I'm, said, Mom, I'm don't call sweetest. me a baby. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, Luke, Mom, I'm not a baby. I'm not going to call him a baby, but he'll Luke always, will always be my baby, though. <laughs> well, he'll always be my baby, too. Yeah. I was, over the weekend, I said, you know, it, it just amazes me. I forget he's 25. Mm-hmm. I but, do, too. It's all right. But he is really 25, but, you know, he still feels like he's five to me. Right. Oh, yeah. You oh, know? yeah. But, uh, I mean, I still worry about him. And, and, you know, when he's home, he's – so, he you know, it's just a little different when they're home. When they're home, you can touch them. You know, you know they're okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah the other day, <laughs> Tish was saying, I said, well, somebody tell me I babied him too much. I don't baby him too much. And Tish is like, oh, yes, you do. And wow. Dex is like, Mom, you do baby me too much. What bit. what sparked your interest in him? <laughs> but anyway, okay, yeah, what would you – We're about. here to tell about his trip. <laughs> He, I've been trying to get him on with here. S, I've been trying to get him on here mm. for uh, since he's since he's came home. But you know, I'm, I'm only on here once a month. But he just got he got back. When was it you actually got back? October, so middle of October. It's, it's been a few months, five or now. six months. Mm -hmm. But he'd been in uh, China. Oh gosh. Okay, let's see. Hong Kong. Yeah, China, Hong Kong, Korea. South Korea, very briefly in Japan on my way home. Um, Thailand at some point. Uh, that might be it. Okay. So you said Japan like you didn't enjoy that. No, I just mean it very, like I, I had a small layover. You would have spent home. more time there That's if you could have. I've always wanted to spend a lot of time in Japan. But okay. it's, I mean, I would go there and work there. It's just so expensive. Okay. So it's very difficult. You know, it's also very competitive to get right. a job there. So 
you have to work very hard to get a job there and then when you're there you don't make any money and you have to commit to be there for two or three years right so it's like geez (laughs) well speaking of jobs so exactly what do you do while you're there i teach english mostly to working adults and some college students that wander in so you went over there to teach english without knowing the language at all uh that's right but he knows english well yeah Yeah, and that's what he went to teach was english right right so how hard was that do you have a translator uh no uh occasionally if they made me do something with little kids they would give me a translator obviously um but but what with china in particular it's it's um a lot of those things are very disorganized china as a whole is quite disorganized i don't th- Communist country. I, I don't think mm-hmm. chinese people would disagree with me saying that um so i ended up learning enough chinese that if i was forced to work with kids i would be able to, to do something okay. yeah. yeah like i would learn a lot of um, some food items and animals and very simple things like that. So I yeah. could just say this is dog, and then the Chinese word for dog, you know, just yeah. go back and forth, that kind of thing. Right. So, what sparked your interest in going over there? I mean, that is a long story, but basically, um, <laughs> well, I in grew, a nutshell, yeah, in a nutshell, I grew up here uh, in Dade County, which is not a very multi-ethnic, multicultural, multilingual. No, it's very much just like the Bible Belt, very conservative old-fashioned like america right Um, right and then i went to covenant college which is just not far away Mm -hmm. but then i was in a very international community and a multicultural community and that's what interested me the most learning about different cultures and how people view the world and communicate and just and the christianity think or or i guess it wouldn't be christianity religions wouldn't it um different religions well yeah but but i was i was more interested in in how there, there are all these really long words for this kind of stuff, but, but you'll take someone from one culture and show them something, and you'll take someone else, and they'll see the same exact thing, and they will think completely different. Mm-hmm. Like, like recently I watched a video. They were showing a lot of Japanese people the, the swastika the Nazi, right. of the Nazis, and to them this is a very deeply religious, very like pure symbol, symbol because because – you know, the swa- Hitler did not invent the swastika. No. You know, so this is something they identify as like a very good moral religious thing in the Western. N- no, not at all. We right. think of the Nazis, obviously. Oh, yeah, you th- so, think of Charles Manson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this ki- this kind of thing. I-, I was very interested in learning about different perceptions of the okay. world, basically. Okay, so um, now tomorrow you're actually going to Thailand. That's right. And what made you choose to go to Thailand? Uh, that was the first Asian country I went to three years ago, I think. And I loved Thailand. And I just sort of assumed that I would like every Asian country to the same degree as I like Thailand. I found that's not quite true. I love The first time you went to Thailand was... Was. When? Uh, I think three years ago, I think, for a school thing. Covenant sent a few students there. We have this thing at Covenant called a... Uh, intercultural experience so you have to immerse yourself in a different culture that's awesome and and study it and think about it and write about it so that's what ours was and it's so amazing because he goes to these places and i'm sitting here listening to him and it's kind of like new to me because to me i'm mama and it's like he's gone yeah no matter where he's gone he's just gone he's just gone yeah (laughs) Yeah, and i can't get a hold of him sometimes so the food there was that hard to get used to or i know like i know they've got mcdonald's and stuff there (laughs) did you try mcdonald's just to see if it was different in china or in thailand either um okay yeah so in thailand getting used to the food is not hard at all it's very spicy so it's very hard to eat but it's so good yeah it is the best food i've ever i need to stay clear of thailand (laughs) yeah yeah maybe um so in china uh that was a little more of an adjustment um Mm -hmm. because they chinese people just eat a bunch of stuff that we just don't eat yeah like Um, monkey right now i know peru eats guinea pigs guinea pigs i yeah, haven't Peru, heard that yeah. one a friend I'm, of mine sent me a picture of the guinea pig they were getting ready to eat for dinner uh, <laughs> wow. uh yeah well but did you like try mcdonald's there just to compare it to what McDonald's yes was i there? actually did eat mcdonald's quite a bit in china um if i ever <laughs> and it's not even because of the food really it's just that that was the china is so different from all the countries i've been to even other asian countries i've been to thailand and korea and briefly japan but china is unique it's it's so radically different so if i ever felt a need to have something that made me feel like home home. Mm -hmm. mcdonald's was it so i remember i would maybe once or twice a week i'd go to mcdonald's 
and I would eat at McDonald's and I would call someone back home. Like That's, that that was you're my home away from home. That was my America time <laughs> yeah. of the week. It's sitting but at McDonald's. It, their menus is it way different from ours. Is it, do you get the same thing? Uh you can. It's a little different, but no you uh, well especially the breakfasts. The breakfasts are very strange. Mm-hmm. Uh I did not care for them. <laughs> What's the strangest thing you've eaten overseas? Um the strangest some organ of some kind, right. like like cow stomach or duck throat. Duck throat would be. That yeah. would be. We have a couple of pictures strange. we can show. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can yeah, get tripe here. Let's start so, on some yeah. of these pictures. Yeah. Which yeah, I like. I like duck throat. It was good. Really? I did. To me it seems it would now, be what chewy. What is this, Dex? So okay, so starting from my first trip in China, this was the first city I lived in, Chengdu, and this is me working with some kids, kind of against my will. Um, you can flip on through, Cody. But I was at an elementary school, um, just teaching them something. This is my real job in Chengdu, just me. This is not my glamour moment, but that was me <laughs> teaching in class. This is a bunch of statues on a mountain. We're on a very high mountain here, mm-hmm. and these are sort of just depictions of the village people. There's your class. This is one of my classes, one of them. They were all that big, 30-something people in every class, yeah. This is the ocean in Chengdu. Just, or no, 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 this is Ningbo. I'm sorry. This is the second city I lived in, just one of the view spots. And this is just one of the parks, so these are... Ningbo is a very scenic city. Just get a look at things. This is a karaoke bar. Me and some friends just How singing karaoke. Funny. Yeah, it's a big thing over there in Asia. This is my boss asleep at her desk, which is I think is very interesting because it's not uncommon for this. Chinese people will nap at work. Don't they like schedule nap time they, during the day? Really? I mean, it's they like, really do. Yeah. yeah. About two o'clock, everyone takes a nap. This is Hong Kong. Very busy. Very. I mean, very crowded. Very busy also very rainy all the time this is my hotel room in hong kong which is so small i'm literally holding a wall at the end of each finger uh-huh. it's a very small hotel room is so the I bathroom just had behind you yes okay and then there's the bed yeah and this um again this is just a busy street in hong kong just market street this is south korea that's mm-hmm. a big baptist church that i thought was just stunning so i took this photo of it it looks kind of church dark in korea Yep. That's awesome. This is a memorial of the people that were killed during the Japanese invasion of mm-hmm. South Korea years ago, and it depicts each different kind of person. And now, uh, never Okay. <laughs> and this is a temple where, and you see there's a swastika-like thing at yeah, the top right of that the temple. Right. So this is, um, I think, a Buddhist temple here, and they were, like, singing, like, Gregorian chants or something here so it was just a neat thing i took videos of it and pictures uh this is thailand this is on the campus of a christian school in the north of thailand and it was very pretty so i just took a picture of it this is ronald mcdonald and you see he's like doing this with his hands yeah this is their greeting this is called the why they will do this and say so i you know this is just how they greet each other so ronald mcdonald is always doing this in thailand funny and that is a great big tower you can't really tell how big it is here but it's several stories high it's very big and it's just about the people that's that built gorgeous. the city that you're is you're laying on this tiger that is me is that a real tiger yes that is me laying on a great big tiger oh now you were lucky there man yep and it was very cheap <laughs> and that is me <laughs> i'm on the right there that's me working in the rice farm with a family in the in a village in thailand this is just another temple uh, there are lots of temples everywhere you go in thailand they're all very beautiful this is just a big line of Buddhas, uh, wow. you know, and there was another one on the other side that was the exact same. You just see Buddha everywhere in Thailand. Again, that's just another temple, and I'm sitting on a boat there in the ocean. That's these, I don't know what these are called, but this is some sort of religious thing. You, like, ring these big bell kind mm-hmm. of things, and somehow it, like, summons these spirits or something. So I just took this picture of it. Um, so awesome. Yep, it's very neat. Very, now, what was it you was telling me that Japan hates China or China hates Japan? Both, that's right. They hate each other. Well, <laughs> everybody kind of hates Japan in Asia. Um, Japan's got a very bad history with everybody else. And why Not to offend Japanese people, but I think they know that's true too. Uh, because they invaded and killed people in like yeah, all it was, of those all countries. Goes back you know, you know Pearl Harbor. Yes. Okay. Right. Well, exactly. Yes. yes. Okay. So they did something like that to every country in Asia. Yeah. At some point. Okay. So that's why everybody kind of hates them. <laughs> but they're doing pretty well now. They're like the richest, one of the richest countries in the world. So that is awesome. I'm, they're doing all right. 
So. Well, I look forward to seeing pictures because I know you did post pictures from time to time mm -hmm. with friends on Facebook. So I'm. That's well, if people awesome. would like to follow you and kind of watch to see what's going on, how could they follow you? Uh, I'm on Facebook, Dexter Bear Wooten, and and um, I don't know. I'm going to be doing a newsletter, an email newsletter. Um, but I'm also considering doing a video blog type thing this time. Do you Instagram? No, I don't Instagram. I, I vowed to not go beyond Facebook. All right, I we are getting at, going, running out of time right here. Again, Dexter Bear, like our bear. Barrett, B-A-R-R-E-T-T. All right, Barrett Wooten. Yep, you can find me there. And, or she'll tell you again if you don't. <laughs> if you forget, you know. All right, good. have a safe trip. All right, thank you. You've been watching Around Town on KWN Community TV Channel 7. The views and opinions on tonight's program are not necessarily those of staff nor the management of KWN Community TV Channel 7 and Dade County Broadcasting Incorporated. Join us every week for another edition of Around Town on KWN TV 7.